What's poppin' everyone? Venom Astaire back with another 2v2 video, and I know it's been a while since I have made one of these, but this is the game type that I have been gravitating towards lately, even though I've been casting mostly Venomous Classics. Those Venomous Classic videos are really what I was interested in. I would watch the major tournaments, obviously I would watch the GSL because of Tasteless and Artosis, but with so many of my favorite players retired, I've just been less inspired and less encouraged to make replay commentaries every single day and I've made especially of players like Vibe and Puck and Neuro I've made a ton of those videos already and I sort of feel like after you make about 20 of them you get into the habit of just saying the same thing over and over again like I know a lot about the StarCraft 2 scene in general as far as the players and the way that they play and their history but if I just cast 30 of the same guy over and over, I'm just sort of saying the same things. And I do, of course, still love Neuro and Punk and Vibe and those guys. But I wanted to throw it back and cast some Idra games because, to me, StarCraft, it's in its third expansion. We're pretty deep into it. And the scene's looking good and foreigners are doing very well. But at the same time, I really feel like we need to step back and commemorate things very frequently in order to sort of keep the scene in perspective, as well as enjoy the old times, because there's not really like sports center for StarCraft 2, so a lot of moments don't really get enough attention, and they never really revisit things. And that's one thing I try to eliminate with my Complete. Venomous Classic series, is sort of forgetting about history. And of course, Idra is my favorite player. So I like to throw it back to his games, even if the, the video quality on the original copies of those Our is pretty terrible. That's part of the charm of 2010. Complete. Now, unlike when I watch Command baseball VODs Complete. of 2010, there is actually no quality better than 2010 available. Because, you know, as we see my ally here, Pogi loses Reaper. I remember watching those videos in real life, in HD, on television. So why are the VODs only available in 360p? However, with StarCraft 2, it's understandable why the VODs are only available in 360p. So if you're like, we're getting to the point, this video says Traitor's Exile in the title, sure. 2v2 video commentary guide. It's a very basic opener, that's why I was able to prattle on so much. This is Traitor's Exile, this map is very open. And this map is played in two ways. You either sort of play to the mid game with lurkers because it has such a short rush distance and it's so congested or which is the more likely option you isolate two people or you isolate one person with two people excuse me aka both players mass up units and attack the person in this position or this position because if you just look at the ma map, natural ramp to natural ramp, which is what you should judge it by, it's very, very small. And if you commit all the way into this ramp, then you're at serious risk of just being flanked. So you always attack this location. Some teams will try to neutrally try to hold up at the top of this ramp, which is smart. But very often, 2v2 is done random random versus random random. And I'm not talking race, I'm talking status of pre-made party. So here's what I like to do on this map is Terran. Anytime I make an expansion, it dies. So I make three barracks early on, all with Tech Lab, and then I make pure Marauder. I research Stim first and then Concussive Shells. The Stim activates right as you're about to hit. Now the thing is, is a lot of people like to open Cyclone or Roach on this map, and Marauder shit on both of those things. And once you have the slow shot upgrade, even without a upgrade be it attack or defense or a medevac or a tank to help it with slow shot the marauder packs a lot of punch after the patch a few months ago that buffed the marauder and nerfed the raven so the marauder got stronger at the expense of the raven personally i think this is a great thing the marauder is more fun to use it's more fun to play against it's more starcraft 2 bread and butter type stuff and quite frankly the raven was sort of goofy in its current state so the fact that the Marauder got a buff is big. And this open builds like 3 racks Marauder back up into the game. And you might be saying, well, 3 racks Marauder, that's really simple. Well, a lot of these 
Traitor's Exile and, you know, Shrines of Linzul commentaries are going to be pretty basic because you have to throw it back to basic one base play to survive. Okay, Savage Woods Bunker being attacked is going to stim Marauders in and oh, the Marauders fend off the side. Oh, and he leaves! Why not saying, why not do I try to break this bunker? Ooh, and there goes the game. So that hero bunker absolutely holding it down. That's pretty funny that he couldn't kill that bunker and he just left right then. That was his moment of breaking. So we're actually going to throw it back further than the bunker and talk about the strategy specifically. It's very simple. That's why I didn't open it up with basic gold order talk. So here, it's... By the way, I hate that Blizzard hasn't fixed this clan emblem garbage glitch. Anyway... So this build is very simple. You delay your second gas, and you rush out three barracks. You get tech lab for each of them pretty much immediately. You can make one marine or one reaper if you want. But I sort of assume that my ally is going to make a reaper, and I sort of play greedy so I can have more units. One of the main things about StarCraft II is cutting corners when you can. And if your opponent makes a reaper, it's a huge pain in your ass, so you have to deal with that. But at the same time, you're rushing out a marauder, and your opponent is, um, or your ally is almost always going to build a reaper. Only a terrible ally would lose his reaper like that to slow links. But there's a Terran here. The ally sort of ran up and saw a Hellion swap. So I know that it's not going to be early reaper. Now if it is early reaper, you can go ahead and get stem second. Get concussive shield first. And just try to, you can even cut, cut workers and make a couple of marauders because slow is an upgrade that finishes very fast. And then you play the edges of your base with a couple Marauders, Reapers can't do much to you. But as a general rule of thumb, you don't want to be cutting workers. That's a last resort. That's only if you know a Reaper's coming. So here a few links poke up. I'm worried. You always want to be careful in 2v2. I pull a few too many workers, but of course, they get about halfway there and pull back. And I only, of course, repair with two after killing most of his lings and as a zerg player if you are if you are going to bandling bus someone a lot of times how it happens is it times out where you have some lings and your bandling nest is about to finish and you run up here see what the wall situation is and run back and then make a bunch of bands and if someone's bandling busting you a good player won't lose any lings they'll just run back as soon as they see units because every little bit helps so it's very simple, I've maxed out workers, I delayed the mining of the second geyser because you really need the minerals of, on marauder builds. And I've gotten stim here as well as concussive shell. Now you want to get stim first if you can swing it. And my opponent's doing a pretty sloppy version of the marauder cyclone build here which is a pretty potent cheese. And this is one of those cheeses, if you couple it with like anything else, Banshee, Zergling, Zealot, like anything, it's going to be very hard to deal with. Because in general for Zerg, it's hard to deal with. So here we see something that's important. You don't have medevacs. You have to pick and choose your spots when to stim. This is very important. So with Marauder builds, we're talking one base, no medevac Marauder builds specifically. You want to get down and dirty deep into your opponent with your ally, especially if they have Hellions or Hellbats, because you have Concussive Shot. You can really force your, your hand here by hitting these Queens, slowing them with your Concussive Shell, picking them off, maybe even slowing the other Queen and letting your ally pick it off with Cyclones. And then the Zerg or his ally is going to feel obligated to hold. And when he throws everything in along with his buddy, that's when you stim. You don't do it like normal bio where you're, you're stimming until the stim's over and then you're stimming again. Because eventually, you even with marauders, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot by getting them all half held. With marines, it's even worse because they have less HP. So here we go. My opponent and I are utilizing the short rush distance to attack cross map. Both of our opponents have sp expanded and my ally are pressuring him them. So here comes the Cyclone Hellion, or not Hellion, but Zergling rather. And notice with just a handful of Hellbats, the Hellbats just eviscerate the Zerglings. And that's something I think Terran players in general sort of don't use enough. They underutilize it. And that's for the primary reason, of course, 
that the Hellbat just shreds Zerglings. Very often, Zerg players will just rely on a ton of Zerglings for defense. You throw a couple of Hellbats in, you don't have to get attack upgrades or blue flame. You just throw the Hellbats in to be cute. Suddenly, Zerg Zerglings become worthless. You can just see the Zerglings get melted off of the Marauders. And if Marauders don't have to worry about Zerglings, it's going to be rough for the Zerg player. Back in 2012, we would see this as a one base all in, and the 1v1 scene as a Marauder Hellion all in. Of course, the Hellion and Cyclone didn't exist back in Wings of Liberty, but the main theory of this rush was, look, the Marauder only really gets countered by Zerglings in the early game for Zerg. This is, of course, before the Queen buff a lot, but still, it applies. So if you can couple the Marauder with either Hellbats or Hellions, you're in good shape. Now in 2v2, the Micro is always a little shady, but even without the Hellbats being moved there, why not decides to leave and his ally insta leaves. So let's get a shot on this bunker one more time because this is a pretty funny rage quit. So since I was pretty much always trying to make workers, if you're in, if you're one base all inning and you have both of these gases saturated and you're doing this push, pull one worker and do this to be cute. Because if this bunker goes up, it's a pain in the ass for this guy. Because when you do this build, this Marauder build, plus any kind of other aggressive action early on off of one base, you're going to kill this guy, no matter what race he is in this position, if his ally doesn't help. So you throw a bunker up, it's a huge deal, because very often this guy will have been delaying his push because he didn't have that many units. That's really the key to all this, is this player will often be playing too greedy because he has the easier base. Here doesn't have a lot of units, but then this happens with the bunker. Look at that stim in there. Start to repair it. Oh crap, he has slow shot. I can't run by him. And since he can't help and this guy's dead, this guy GG's. So to quickly sort of hit the high points here. Early three racks, delay this gas. Once you get it, only mine with two. Something you can do is mine with two in each gas. That's an old school Protoss trick that you might find useful. And then of course keep making SCVs if you can. Be really persistent about dropping mules. And of course there's no Protoss so you don't have to worry about oracles. If there was a Protoss here probably would be worth in teching in an eBay plus one and a turret and sort of delaying your push another minute. That's just a thought. And of course once I have the minerals, I'm going to take an expansion. If you wanted to, hypothetically, the follow-up to, uh, follow to this would be an eBay or two, depending on your economy and how much damage you did, a factory into tanks on this map because it's so short and tanks are so good, as well as reactor medevacs. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. It's been Venomous Stare.